Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to deal with water damage inside of your home. We understand that water damage a lot of times can look insignificant. However, if it's not addressed properly, it could really cause a tremendous amount of damage to your home. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about just that right after we roll the intro. All right, guys, welcome back. My name is Rico Garcia. I'm the founder of Ecotech Pro. We're a full service water mitigation, mold remediation, biohazard cleanup located down here in beautiful, sunny South Florida. If you are new to the YouTube channel, make sure that you hit that thumbs up button and make sure that you subscribe as well to the channel um, to go ahead and show your love and support for the content that we provide. More importantly, today what we're gonna be talking about is possibly one of the one of the areas in the industry that gets overlooked quite a bit, and that's really how to deal with water damage, right? Especially as a homeowner, a lot of times we just see a little bit of water damage. We just want to go ahead and take care of it ourselves. We don't want to involve a, a dry out company or water mitigation company. We feel that it's, it's, it's sometimes a little too overwhelming for a lot of homeowners, right? However, there are a couple of things that you should keep in mind in the event that you have water damage. First of all, is what kind of category, what category category of water damage is it, right? In the mold remediation industry and the water mitigation industry, we have a uh, three different categories of water, right? Category one, two, and three, pretty simple, right? And essentially what that means and what it boils down to is the degree of uh, contamination within the water. So the very first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and determine what kind of contaminants are in that water, right? Did it come in from a roof? Did it go through uh, decking and insulation and possibly um, any other kind of contaminants that might be in the attic and then made its way into the living space? Was this, you know, a fresh water or clean supply line that caused the water damage? Was it from a shower pan? Was it from the toilet bowl? or a toilet tank. All of these, you know, scenarios are going to merit a different type of response in order to make sure that number one, there's not a bacterial load in the property. And number two, it's going to dictate whether or not the material can be dried out in place or if it would be more prudent to simply remove that content and provide a safer living environment right? The other thing is, is it all about equipment. A lot of homeowners just simply don't have the necessary equipment to go ahead and properly dry out their property, right? A lot of people, and again, this is stuff that we've seen um, when we get called out for mold remediation projects, we have a conversation with the homeowner and they say, oh, well, it just seemed like a little bit of water. We touched the wall. It seemed dry we thought we did the job properly, right? And then what ends up happening is, is that now they have an added expense of a mold remediation project and now their house is a construction zone and things of that nature. So the other thing is just equipment, right? So making sure that you have the right equipment to monitor what's actually going on in the property. What is the relative humidity in the property? Uh, do you have a moisture meter so that you can identify the areas that you're trying to dry out, where that water is concentrated if it's trapped behind a wall cavity or something along those lines. And then of course, do you have the right equipment as far as air movers or fans or blowers, whatever it is that you want to call them to go ahead and, you know, facilitate this drying process alongside with having dehumidifiers in the property as well to pull all of that humidity out of the property and minimizing the possibility of secondary damage. So in the event of water damage, regardless of how big or how small, or if you think it should just be a simple do-it-yourself project, it's really recommended for you to go ahead and take a step back for a second and contact a water mitigation company that can go ahead and at the very least assess the situation for you and find out whether, um, 
whether or not you really need to bring in a pro to go ahead and dry out the property and get it back to its original dry standard. The last point is, is when you're dealing with water damage, what you really should be concerned with is not only, of course, the damage that's already been caused by the water, but also any secondary damages. And by secondary damage, we are talking about the potential for mold growth or you know bacteria or whatever the case may be. So if the property isn't dried out properly, then you have all of these secondary damages that later on could cause a tremendous amount of, of headaches and a lot more expenses overall. So that's it guys, make sure that if you have any kind of water damage in the property, that number one, if you don't have all the right tools and you don't have the right equipment to properly identify the areas that were actually damaged um, and how to dry it out properly, Properly, just make sure that you contact your local uh, water mitigation company, have them come in, do an assessment of the property, moisture map the entire property to find out what exactly um, has been damaged and then also let you know what kind of water uh, or the the category of water that's affected your property because that's going to dictate a lot of what the repair process is going to look like hope that you guys enjoyed the video again my name is rico garcia make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel and i will see you next week <laughs>